All right, hi everybody. Welcome to our second ever live stream. Um, whether you're watching this live right now or you're watching it on YouTube after the fact, uh, this will be kind of a fun thing. So um, if you guys don't know me, my name is Conrad Cornelson. I'm the co-founder of LC Double Reads. I am also a professional bassoonist and a bassoon teacher. And along with my wife and partner in crime, who's here with me right now, you can say hi. Hi. <laughs> um, we co-founded LC Double Reads back in 2017. So pretty much what we are as a business is we are a double read tools and accessories company and we work hands-on with manufacturers to sort of bring those designs into reality. Um, so since everything's going on with the pandemic the way it is right now, and I'm not going to the symphony every day, uh, Shadi's not going to the symphony every day, um, we're not going to the university to teach, uh, we decided that with our company, we would put out some weekly videos and do occasional live streams like this one, where we can either showcase products, kind of like what we did last week in our live stream, or we can talk about helpful double read related topics like knife sharpening, which is what we're going to talk about today. Um, so as you can see, I have this camera right over here above my right shoulder. And I have it positioned as such you're going to be looking right over Shadi's shoulder as she does the knife sharpening. So yeah. she is going to be our resident hand model for the day. So that'll be fun. So let me go ahead and switch it over to the two camera view. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to start with just sharpening a knife or two, talking through the process. And then we have a bunch of questions that people have already submitted. Uh, as well as we want to give you guys the opportunity to ask your own questions if there's something with knife sharpening that you feel like has always thrown you through a loop or something like that. So let me switch over to the two camera view and we'll get started. I'm going to be manning the camera. So here we go. All right, so as you can see, you are looking right over Shadi's left shoulder. And yeah, Let's what would you like to say? Let's talk about the stone first, if you call. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the sharpening stone itself. So one of the things that we get a lot of questions on is what kind of sharpening stone should I use? Um, everybody knows there's a lot of different sharpening stones on the market today. Um, a lot of them are really fantastic. And um, yeah, I think, would you have to say anything about that? Yeah, well today we're just gonna use the Shapton water stone. This is the Shapton uh, Japanese water stone. Japanese water stone. And then the grates is, I think it's, uh, it's 1500. Okay, so this is a 1500 grit Shapton Japanese water stone and this is sort of the primary stone that we use most of the time when we're sharpening knives and I would say because we also received a question along the lines of you know if you had to purchase one stone that was going to do 90% of the work for you say if you're just getting started in knife sharpening or you know if you're a student or something and you're really on a shoestring budget um, I think this is the stone you guys should look into so it's a, yeah, a Shapton yeah it'll, it'll be life-changing for you um, Shapton Japanese water stone 1500 grit okay. so let's get started okay so we're gonna wet the stone it's oh, a little too much oh Jay says nice haircut thank you sir I did it myself yeah okay we're gonna start with the bevel knife okay because it's, it's easier to sharpen a bevel knife and uh, you really only have to manage the angle for one side. So I'm just gonna put that on the stone. Actually, um, our knife, as you can see, is a little bit... It's just a little, li bit, longer little bit longer than, than the, the stone, stone is wide. So I, I'm angling it so the whole knife can be, you know, sharpened yeah, on the so stone. So you're covering the full surface of the blade yeah you don't have to do one side and then go back and do the other side yeah yeah so so just like that and push it down because it's just perfectly flat on that one side what we're just gonna do so with the beveled knife what you're doing is you're actually laying it flat against the stone yeah when we're starting yeah and then sometimes i hold like this because i i've, I've been sharpening so many thousands knives so i know the evenness i can feel from the material of the knife and the stone but if for some people who just start to sharpening knives 
I um, suggest that you actually pressing down evenly on the uh, on the knife so I won't do that because it's kind of tiring um, so I'm just going back to my usual position so w how much downward force would you say you're using right now um, I would say so I'm setting up a new knife so this is not never ever been sharpened before so I'm probably gonna use a little bit more force uh, well it depends if it's a very old knife you might have to use a lot of force as well but you're gonna have to feel the resistance you know uh, between the knife like I, I don't know if you can hear the sound it's definitely making a lot of you can hear a little bit of a scraping sound on that yeah and you can definitely feel it more so that's why it's hard to teach knife sharpening because I would say 80% of it is just how you feel like yeah. you have this feeling how the knife how the material getting you know grinded yeah so how long you as you said this is a brand new knife it's never been set up before mm -hmm. um, how long would you do this step oh I forgot counting um 50 60 times I think I did enough already if somebody's counting that but I think uh, I would say just to sit um, 50 60 times okay so it's back and forth it's it's not a small number of times it's not a small yeah. number of times yeah yeah now I will say with our knives uh, if you purchase a knife from us or if you purchase one of our knives through one of our distributors like Hodge products or Midwest musical imports or any of these great people out in the world um, every single knife that leaves our possession has been hand sharpened by us so this first step in actually setting up a new knife if you purchase a knife one of, that comes from our company, um, one of the Chong series knives, um, that's not something you'll have to do. But if you do purchase a brand new knife from somewhere else that maybe hasn't been set up that first time, this may be something that you have to do starting off on a new knife. Yeah. Okay, so I'm done with, with the flat surface and I'm going to turn the stone a little bit because again, I want to... I don't want to turn my body so get my shoulder hurt after a while so I'm going to turn the stone so I can cover the whole uh, surface of the knife again. I'll add a little bit of water. Um, okay so I raise a little bit um, angle on the bevel knife. Usually people don't do that on the traditional bevel knife. They're just using the guidance of the bevel that's already the bevel there. is already there but we have a such a long beveled so for a quicker uh, result uh, i'm gonna raise a little bit and that's how how i set up the knife and and i figured that that's you know something that people wants to try because you can always burn it back right um so first of all i'm putting it down using the bevel is there already and then I, uh, I don't know if you can see that. So that is not going adjust anywhere. That focus just a little bit so you can. Oh yeah, see. that's better. Okay, and then I raise the angle a tiny little bit, not a lot, only a little bit. Maybe five degrees. Yeah, it's, it's, hard it's not to, much at all. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not much at all. You can see like how little my hands are moving. I'm not doing this, and I'm just doing tiny little bit. Okay, and then. So that side, I need to be more concentrate, focus, because I cannot change the angle once I made a decision how high, how low I'm right. going to do. And I want to point out one thing that maybe you guys can see it okay, maybe you can't just because uh, of where her shoulder is. But the thing I want you to notice is that her wrists are not moving. So when she's doing this, she's holding a very steady angle with her wrists and then letting her arms do the work. So another question that we received uh, on our Instagram account somebody submitted was how can we make sure that we're holding a consistent angle as we're sharpening? And that's really the key to it is making sure you're holding with your wrists and letting your arms do the work. I think a common mistake that a lot of people make is that 
as they move their arms, they also get loose with their wrists. And as a result, you're just kind of pushing it back and forth on the stone without anything really happening in terms of defining the angle. So I think that's something to note that you know, always keeping your wrist steady, letting the larger muscle groups do the work on this. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's basically down. Um, also, I think the pushing speed, right, mm -hmm. needs to be a little bit quicker because it's just easier to keep the, uh, uh, the same angle that you, you know, you, you, decide, you decided at the beginning. Yeah. If you go very slowly, of course, you know, you're going to have to hold the knife longer and you, or your armor might get like a little sore afterwards. It just go fast, you know, I think it's easy. It's like a bicycle. Right. It's easier to just go for it than slowing bicycle and you can't really keep it. It's harder to uh, stay a straight line. Right. And, and one question I want to take just a second to address while we're sort of shifting things around with this. Uh, one of the questions that we received that I kind of want to touch on for a little bit um, is how do you approach knife sharpening? Uh, for a double reed instrument, I suppose this could apply for any kind of knife sharpening. Um, how do you approach knife sharpening if you've never done it before and you're nervous and you're scared that you're going to mess up the knife, right? And this is just one of those things. It's sort of a tough topic because you're never going to be 100% prepared with it. It's always going to feel foreign when you're new, uh, but you just got to do it. Um, you can't be afraid to mess up because mm -hmm. you're either going to succeed or you're going to learn from it, right? So yeah. um, chances are when you're first starting out, you're going to be so careful that the problem will actually be that you're not getting the knife sharp enough, right? Yeah. And and even if you, you know, screw it up, I mean, there's not really a whole lot bad that could happen. Yeah. Um, I mean, unless you like really go for it and, you know, bend the knife or something, which is yeah. not going to happen. Yeah, people would be turned to more, more too careful than uh, more too rough. That's what right, yeah. yeah. So um, you just can't be afraid to try it and can't be afraid to experiment with it. But if it's something that you want to get good at, um, I'll admit that I am personally not good at knife sharpening, but I'm married to somebody who is really good at knife sharpening, <laughs> so it, it kind of works out. But if there's anything you want to get good at, whether it's sharpening knives or playing the bassoon or playing the oboe or taking auditions or whatever it is, I mean, really the only way to learn is through experience. So I would say the best way to learn how to sharpen knives and approach knife sharpening, if you've never done it before and if you're nervous, would just be to sharpen your first 50 knives, you know, get out there and do it. And yeah. oh, 50 times. <laughs> yeah, 50 times each, why not? And, and eventually, yeah, you'll just sort of get a feel for it and, um, and go from there. But I think, yeah, that, that's sort of the main gist of that one, but we can touch on that more later. Yeah, okay, so um, I think the, the work on the stone is done, um, and I'm just gonna test and see if there's a, there's a little, little edge on the flat side because we need the burr on that, on, on that side. So I feel a little bit, and then I'm gonna run my finger. I mean, I'm gonna run my nails, not my finger, uh, through the knife, and I can see if anywhere that seems a little, you know, bumpy. I wish you can feel that, but. You're not pressing when you do this. I'm not pressing down. So if you don't press worry. when you do this, so, you will cut your finger off. <laughs> no. Don't do that. Uh, okay, so now I'm gonna just set the burr a little more aggressively with this uh, steel rod. This is a, a uh, piece of honing steel rod. Um, there are a lot of good ones on the market. If people have questions about what kind of steel rod to get, this is sort of our main one that we recommend it's by a company called Dicaron. it's out of germany and this is the micro which, yeah and then that's a which that, that's super pretty fine. that's pretty big i'd hate to see the macro yeah but uh <laughs> it's super fine this so, so super they have fine a different grit. materials yeah. and that's it um, so a lot of you know sushi chefs and stuff them. like that they'll use this particular knife for you know sharpening their sushi knives that they cut fish with because those need to be super sharp uh, but there are a lot of good budget options on the market as well. I know 
Um, I think you mentioned Midwest Musical Imports. Yeah, they have a pretty good uh, They one. have a really good affordable sharpening steel if you're not ready to jump to the pro grade sharpening steel. Yeah, that one will work perfectly fine. Okay, so the last step. So the same thing, I would suggest you putting the, uh, the, the, the steel rod on the table. I'm gonna make myself a little more comfortable here. Okay, and then you're gonna go, well, I need, okay. Okay, let me, let me move the camera here. So everybody can see what's going on. Okay. Okay, so just gonna go flat on that side. But using the um, steel rod, you could actually really feel more how smooth or how not smooth your knife is. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this at all. You can run it two times, five times. It's fine if you miss the first feel of it. So if there's anything that stopped the 100% smoothness, I suggest you go back to the stone and do the work again. So luckily I don't have to do that. I'm gonna flip the knife and then I'm gonna raise the um, uh, angle a little higher. Uh, it, it could be a little bit higher than what you put it on the stone, it could be the same. Because you know, it's really a burr. You're not changing any shape of the the knife because you know once it's not sharp anymore you put it back on the stone again so it just for the next maybe i would say like an hour scraping so it won't change your life completely you just want to make it sharp it feels really smooth so you can for 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 bevel knife i could put a little more pressure on it now i'm gonna um so I'm not, so, wait, can do the test again, but it's, it's great. Um, but now I am trying to move the knife from my nail, just putting it down, not with a lot of pressure, actually not with any pressure at all, just the weight of the knife. From the tip, little by little, and feel the evenness. And the knife doesn't want to go anywhere. It doesn't move. I'm not cutting it, but it just... You can feel it catching. Yeah, you I can feel, feel it perfect. catching. Um, so, but I think I'm going to do it a little more for my own personal taste. So I'm going to increase a little pressure. Okay, I like that better. Some people don't like it too. Do no, they don't like the, the actual burr to be, be too, too aggressive. aggressive. Now, this is something that, you know, if you're an experienced knife sharpener or if you've been making reeds for more than a few years, you know what we mean when we say burr. But if you're not an experienced knife sharpener um, or if, you're, if you've sharpened knives but you've never sharpened a reed knife before, this might be new terminology for you. So I just want to take a second to talk about what the burr is. So typically with... Um, with knives, you know, you sharpen it down until it's a really fine point like this. But because we're not slicing the cane when we make a reed, and we're actually kind of catching it and scraping it, you want one side to come down, well, I guess this is a better way to show it, you want one side to come down just a little bit further than the other side. And when you use the steel rod, you're actually ever so slightly bending that to make it into like, it's sort of like a little hook. Yeah. Right? Now, right. I mean, it's, very very small in scale yeah you can see about. you can see that on with, with your um, eyes but you can definitely feel a little bit yeah okay. there's a few comments I want to take just a second to kind okay. of address those I, okay. I'm, I'm still new to this whole streaming thing so I apologize if we're not addressing comments so uh, EJ Kim said when you're done using the stone do you have to rinse it or clean it off with water before putting it away yes Yes, you're supposed to. Sometimes, if I don't, but I would end up spending more time cleaning it after a day or two, or after you know how many sharpening right. happens. You know, if it's, it's you know it's the same thing. It's easier if you clean it right away, just like your room. If you have a pile of dirt and dirty clothes for weeks, and you might spending a lot of more time 
to clean in it. Right. So, but you know, it just. Uh, Joseph Michael said, "Stopping by just to say, my Chong knife is the best knife I have ever owned." Thank wow, you. thank you so much. That's really nice. I was really scared to change after using a different brand of knives for 10 years, but anyone watching, you have to try it. It really improved my consistency. It only took a week or two to get used to it, and I will never go back. Thank you so much, man. That is very nice of you to say that. Thank you. Okay, uh, Brian Briones. Hi, Shouty and Conrad. Hey, uh, thanks for the great products and live streams. Thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Okay, so the last test. Last test. Last test, you know, um, I always do this test um, before I ship it, just, you know, um, to make sure that it actually works on, on the read. Mm -hmm. on a real can. Can you make it a little um, focus better? I can try. Yeah. So let's test it and see how, you know, Ovo can is pretty dense, pretty hard. Oh, that feels really good. Like... And I don't know if you guys can hear that. If you turn up your volume, you might actually be able to hear it. But Yeah, so... kind of wish I could pull the microphone down and get some nice ASMR. <laughs> Read scraping sounds. That might be a video for another day. Okay, I think the tip is done. That's it. I mean, not the tip is done. I mean, the bark of the tip is gone. Um, yeah, it's really smooth. And, you know, people can use different parts of the knife. And uh, I tend to use the front. So, I don't know if you can... So that's the can that I took off. Yeah. It feels really good. Um, long scraping, smooth. It's actually not that aggressively catching. So is that catching or catchy? Catching. Catching, okay, thank you. Yeah, it feels really good actually. I haven't made reads for a while. I have to come to this. <laughs> but it's it feels okay. good. It feels good to scrape with knife like that. So that's a brand new knife, straight from our manufacturer to us. It hasn't been set up yet, um, but we always, you do a little test scrape on a blank or something to make sure that the knife feels good before we send it out. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanna mention is every knife, like I said, every knife that we send out is sharpened by us. That also gives us an opportunity to sort of do a little bit of quality control on the knife. So if we notice that there's some sort of manufacturing defect, or if we notice that something's weird with the metal on this one and it's just not wanting to sharpen the same way as the other ones that doesn't go out yeah ever yeah period right yeah mm, okay so we took a long time to sharpening the first knife right? right i'm gonna do the same thing and i'm not gonna talk conrad's not gonna talk because we already talked I'm just going to go through the process again and see how easy and how quick it could be. Yeah. Okay, so I'm starting. I'm putting the water on the stone already, so it's pretty damp. Um, okay, so this is a brand new, and it doesn't... It is pretty bad. Um, I mean, it's just a new knife. So I'm going to start. If you guys want to time it, that's fine. I've never done it, but let's do it. Okay, this 50 times. You can do a little more or less. And I'm just cleaning the, the, the moist, and the dirt from the knife before I turn to the other side. Again, this is a step for me. You don't have to do, you can turn your body in a different angle just to cover the whole knife.
a little more pressure on that. There's another blank. Let's see it. Another comment, Kirsten Myers said, I love your knives. The feel of the knife is so light and balanced. It sharpens easily and has lasted for years. I recommend it to all of my students. Thank you for a great affordable product. Thank you, Kirsten. That's so nice of you to come on and say that. We really appreciate it. under three minutes well actually I scraped the reeds so yeah it's just a test yeah but anyway so that gives you an idea um, just kind of going through our basic process of knife sharpening all the stuff involved um, that those were two beveled knives mm -hmm. um, also you know to anybody who's watching go ahead and start dumping any knife sharpening relating questions that you have in the chat because we will be going through and addressing those here shortly mm -hmm. um, and we will try to get to as many as we can with the time that we have, but we're also working on a video for this. So anything that we don't cover today, we will make sure that gets covered at some point. So we mm -hmm. want to answer anybody's questions. Mm -hmm. You can also email us or something after the fact, uh, if it's something you'd prefer to talk to us about that way. Yeah. Um, so I usually use two type of knives to make an oval read. Mm -hmm. um, bevel mm -hmm. knife, definitely taking the bark off less than a minute. So, and then the next step I want to do that I all involved the, 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 the double hologram knife that mm -hmm. we have. So this is also new, like it doesn't, it doesn't do anything at all. So we will not ship that to you guys like that. So, so let's work on it. Okay, I'm not gonna put it on, on the, uh, put the knife on the stone flat because you will not want to scraping this part of the metal. You don't need to do that. So I'm lifting it up a little bit. I would say uh, 10, 15 degree. Yeah, I would say probably, let me take, let me whip out my compass real quick and measure that. Now I'd say generally when you're starting something on the flatter side, maybe 10 to 15 degrees from the stone. Yeah. Okay, the same technique, try to make sure you cover the whole, whole surface of the whole blade. Surface. And again, you're keeping your wrists steady. That's how you're maintaining the angle. Yeah. And you're letting your arms and even I would say like your back muscles are kind of doing some work. Yeah, good this. posture is, is good. So, just gonna do definitely putting some pressure because the stone I'm using is not rough at all although they do have a higher number like 2,000, 5,000, 8,000, 15,000 which is just the glass I think I have all of them because I want to try which one would work the best with our knives and I think 1500 Japanese um, Shapton Japanese water stone work the best okay I forgot counting again but I think that's right so you know talking about the different kinds of knives um, and we are not knife sharpening scientists you know as I said in the beginning or if you know who we are I'm a professional bassoon player my wife's a professional oboe player it is what it is but we are basically just sharing with you stuff that works you know it's stuff that works for us it is within a short amount of within time. a short amount of time yeah. because yes there's the proper way to sharpen a knife where you go through the series of coarser and coarser stones, you know, starting with something more coarse and then working your way to something finer. But 
I mean, for us, why do we sharpen knives? We sharpen knives because we want to make reeds and we want to play. play. We want to play with the toy. You know, yeah. we want to play with our instruments. So, yeah. um, really, just getting down to business yeah. as quick as possible. So, I just putting the disclaimer out there. We are not saying this in an authoritative way. We're not saying that no. anybody else who has published knife sharpening guides is wrong. Um, this is just how we do it. This is just how we do it. It's what works for us. Um, yeah. I since you mentioned that. Um, there is occasionally times when I'll see you switch to a coarser stone. Yes. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Um, I. Um, so you probably don't have to do that with a bevel knife, um, but definitely uh, once you know the knife goes uh, pretty thick. Uh, uh, I mean, after how 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 much you would say like. When the knife is probably two third way down, you might wanna switch to a coarser stone just to take the metal off of off your knife. Just to remove some of that material. Or if you get to the point where you're sharpening your knife and you feel like you can no longer get the kind of edge that you were getting before and the yeah, same kind of smoothness. Um, and we really have kind of three things that we're thinking about when we're sharpening knives and we'll talk about that in a second but if you can't get that same kind of edge that you're getting before it might be time to just throw it on a, a slightly coarser stone yeah save your time a little bit yeah save your time a little bit take away some of that big bulk material and then you can put it back on the finer stone to refine it a yeah. little bit more yeah so right now we don't need to do that because it's pretty thin if you can see that's pretty thin yeah okay N notoriously thin yeah um okay so i'm putting my four fingers all on um the back of the knife because this is much lighter knife i mean the material comparing with the bevel knife so uh, my holding hands gets pretty heavy sometimes because it's comfortable to hold it so i don't want to make the sharpening unbalanced so i'll do this and I, I'm lifting, you can lifting the same angle with the other side you just did. I just did because, you know, in the end, you just, you can, you have to set up the burr by using the steel rod. Okay, let's do it. Oh, you can see my thumb. My thumb is holding this, the, 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 the back, spine. the spine, yeah, the, the back of the knife. Okay. All right. The same thing, exactly the same thing. The feel is going to be a little bit different than the bevel knife. Um, I just demonstrate oh it's pretty smooth one so this steel rod thing is to test if your knife is uh, smooth or not if there's any bumping spot also setting up the burr so two things for me yeah also i want to just mention uh margaret marco if you're still watching the stream right now your knife that you ordered an hour ago this is your knife. Oh, okay. <laughs> Unless there's something wrong with it. Unless we find that, you know, it's got this, some defect or something. Yeah, this is really good. Okay, so, so the same test. So I'm gonna run this on my nail. Okay, it's very smooth. And then I'm gonna do the test that putting the knife and then and see if some part might be a little not as good. So I can actually go back and just fix a little bit. Yeah, that feels really good. Okay, I'm gonna use this. Um, I will, okay, I will not put the double hologram knife, the really thin knife like this on a blank, like a blank blank. I would not touch the reed with this. It could work for that. It could, but... It is... Generally what we advise is you use some sort of heavier, heavier. knife for actually scraping bark. 
Uh, just because this is such a thin blade, it's really best suited for sort of fine detail work like finishing a tip or something like that. So it's a, it's a really specialized tool, I wish but we it could can, be used for everything. I wish we can make this look better. I don't know how to... But if it feels really good. Like it takes... I'm not using pressure, so here's the thing you cannot tell maybe. It's, it, it just... the corners and whatever you want to do is is going for it so yeah i think that's a success yeah so it feels good and sometimes people like to you know have a more aggressive feel um you can really just reset the burr on the steel rod like you you higher angle more you know more pressure but not too much because it might you know, damage the blade, damage the blade and you have to, well, the worst thing gonna happen to you, like, is just that you have to put it back, um, put the knife back on the stone yeah. and then remove some of the material again and then make it smooth and thin again and then use the steel rod. So, right. so there's three main things that we're thinking about, uh, and then I'll get to some of those comments that are coming in. Uh, there are three main things that we're thinking about when we're doing knife sharpening, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're thinking about the thinness of the edge, making sure that we grind it down so that way the edge is thin enough, right? Yeah, so to, you can play the sharp. burr. And then the second thing we're thinking about is smoothness, making sure that it is sort of equally thin. And when we say smooth, you know, it's equally thin across the surface of the edge. And the third thing is the burr, right? And actually what it feels like when you're scraping. Uh, how it catches on the cane and the burr is a really um, it's, it's, it's kind of a personal thing right because some people prefer scraping with reed knives that catch a little bit more aggressively um, some people prefer scraping with reed knives that don't catch as aggressively and that that all just sort of depends on yeah. your personal preferences yeah but thin and um, smooth is definitely the first two things yes yeah. Yeah, so you cannot only use this, the, the, the steel rod. Mm -hmm. um, so... Yeah, so let's look at some of these comments that yeah. are coming in. Uh, okay, Sean Reynolds, apologize if this was covered. Uh, do you feel that ceramic stones give the best results? I also finish with steel, but are curious about your thoughts on ceramic versus other types. Well, this is actually not a ceramic stone, this is a Japanese water stone. Um, is that also called ceramic? Stone? I guess it is a type of ceramic, ceramic but it's not like the white ceramic. Oh, yeah. You know, like the crock sticks or something. Actually, I've never used that. I can, I can speak to yeah. you, know, for people who ever used it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny because Shadi and I were having a conversation about this earlier, which is that, you know, a lot of people ask us, what kind of stone should I get? And I really feel like, yes, there's sort of pros and cons to each type of stone. Um, we used to use like almost exclusively diamond stones yeah. until maybe two years ago, we started switching mm -hmm. to using these Shapton stones, which mm -hmm. work really well. Mm -hmm. um, but the most important thing just to keep in mind is that the grit of the stone is more important than the type of the stone. So yes. if you're always working with stones that are too fine, um, you're not gonna get the kind of edge you want to. If you're always working with stones that are too coarse, you're also not gonna get the kind of edge you want to, right? Yeah. Um, another thing is um, you have to feel like you have to um, ex establish a feeling between the knife and the stone. If it's too much resistance, that means uh, the stone is too coarse mm -hmm. for the knife. Sometimes you need to do that. So when you have an old knife that you just want to remove the material from the knife quickly. So you do that. Um, but if it's a new knife, if you feel like, oh my God, that's too much resistance, uh, maybe switch to a, a finer stone. But if there's no resistance at all, switch to a coarser one. Right, right. Um, so, I mean, there are pros and cons for each type. Uh, we really like these Japanese water stones purely because we 
think that they really give us a good quality edge. Yeah. And even though we were using a similar grit diamond stone before, we feel like, and again, this is personal preference, we feel like we get better results with our knives on this stone. Yeah. Some knives may work differently with other stones. Yeah. Um, the big con to using the Japanese water stones is after, say, how many I don't times? Know. Um, after you've after sharpened a, a few times, after a while. A well, couple well, actually, months, actually. Yeah. A couple months or half month or... Yeah, depending depends on, on how much, how much you sharp. use in it. Yeah, but after a while. Yeah. After some arbitrary amount of time. Um, you'll start to see, if you look at it from the side, you'll start to see that the actual stone starts to get like a dip in it. Yeah, when you get to that point, it's probably, you know, it's like the cleaning your room after a month instead of, you know, right away. Right, right. You're going to spend a lot more time to fixing the stone. Right, so what you actually need to get, and this is, this is an investment, because these things aren't cheap, but yeah, um, what you actually need to get if you're using these kind of stones you should invest in a cast iron lapping plate. It's very like heavy, I think. Right yeah. um, I mean, this thing's gonna last you forever. It's literally cast iron. It feels like I'm holding the cast iron skillet we have in our kitchen. But I'll just pop this in the frame so you guys can take a look at it. Mm -hmm. And sort of the, the, the thing is, the cast iron lapping plate is it's sort of like a sharpening stone for the sharpening stone. Yeah. Right, so what you would do is you would take that uneven surface that's on the sharpening stone, mm -hmm. lay it down, and like you just kind of go back and forth on yeah, it, right? There, yeah. yeah, there's also like, the, so so on the box there's instruction how you do it. There's also some sand you put it on just to have like quicker um, uh, result. So this seems like raw uh, rust. rust, but is it will go away actually i i would i just used it and then it was a couple hours ago and then it will become the this uh silver color again yeah Let me remove this thing so, heavy. Um, okay. so just for time's sake what was there anything else on the well i just want to i cover? yeah double hologram i just want to um just do it again and without stopping okay and then just you know like people can see like how how the whole process is without interrupting sure. by us. I'm not gonna set a timer this time. So. Okay. Lifting a little bit. Let's go. So that's about fifteen to twenty degrees off the stone. Excellent. Okay, let's go down through some of these comments. Matt Lingus. Hey, Matt. How are you doing? Hi, Matt. Um, whoa. Oh, um, love the comment about good posture and steady wrists and hands. I've also found that it. I also found it to be very important in maintaining consistent angles. Yes, absolutely. Um, those two things really make a huge difference. Um, 
Margaret, yes, um, that first double hollow ground knife that we did was going to be yours. So, um, yeah, hope you enjoy it. Uh, Victoria Donaldson, for this knife, did you use different angles on the steel? Um, no, I wouldn't. I mean, it, it, it depends on people's preference. Yeah, and that kind of goes into how aggressive you want that burr to be, right? Because yeah. we're, we're making this burr. And essentially, you know, yes, the sharpening steel helps to smooth that out. But essentially, one of the things is you're kind of bending the burr ever so slightly when you rub it on the sharpening steel. Yeah. You're not pressing really hard. But yeah. even just that if little... You wanna, if you want an aggressive burr, you can you raise can raise the angle. It. Yeah. yeah, or press it a little harder. But you will know if you press too hard, you're going to do some damage on the knife. Um, but don't worry if there if, if that happens just bring it back yeah on the knife yeah you can I always mean, take sorry, it back to the, on stone, the stone sorry yeah and then bring it to the steel all right yeah. philip laroque uh what would you look for to determine if it's time to replace a knife um for our knife until it's gonna take you so long to i mean for all the knives if yeah. i mean for me if you're gonna have to spend like an hour, I wouldn't even spend, I, I wouldn't even want to spend 20 minutes because 20 minutes I probably could make two reads. Yeah. So it just depends. If the knife is taking too long for you to work on to get the result you want, uh, maybe it's time to replace it. Yeah. But our knife is they thing for a right. very... Right, so what we're looking at just to expand on that is when the actual material of the knife gets to a point where its thickness makes it difficult to get down to that thin smooth edge like we were talking about because remember you're looking for thin smooth and then you worry about the burr so if the if you get to a spot in the knife where it's like almost as thick as the spine which you know some knives are like that pretty early on um then it's going to be difficult to get it down to that thinness that you want to be. I've seen some people keep sharpening their knives until it's like so tiny. Some people like it. Some you people know? like that. Yeah. But I would say generally for us, that's what we would look for. And when yeah. we were designing uh, particularly our double hollow ground knife, that's one of the things that we really wanted to do was make it so that it gets thin and then it stays thin for a long time. So that way you get a little bit more life out of your knife and say if you're a uh, professional player and you're burning through knives pretty quickly then you don't have to replace this knife as frequently as you would some other knives on the market yeah um, uh -huh. it will get sharpened even it, even it's a really old knife it just takes you so long yeah and uh, so yeah so Ellen asked if we could go over the angles for sharpening and the process again. Um, so Ellen, we are going to be putting this whole live stream, we're going to be uploading it to YouTube after the fact. So if there's anything you felt like you missed, you can always go back and watch that later. But just like Reader's Digest quick version, um, starting about you know 15 to 20 degrees, kind of flat to the, to the stone, um, doing some passes in each direction. And then when you're on your finishing edge, maybe raising it, kicking it out by about five degrees or so before you flip it over to the sharpening steel, um, just to help establish which side's gonna be your, your scraping side. Yeah, or you can just, you know, if it's too hard to f figure out the exactly how much higher mm -hmm. uh, on the other side, um, when you push it away from you, um, then you can just do exactly the same and then use the steel rod to set up the burr right so i would do that don't make it too complicated yeah. and for the beveled knives um, the beveled knife actually helps you out quite a bit because on the flat side you just lay it flat yeah. against the stone and then on the actual side that has the bevel we like to raise it up just a just little bit ten. but some people like to just use that bevel that's already built in there so that's a personal preference thing yeah um uh, Sean Reynolds, great info. Thanks for the great video you're producing. Thank you, Sean, for tuning in. Uh, Jillian Camwell just ordered. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. You're you. awesome. Um, are you lifting higher when going away? You could. You could. You could yeah. do that. Um, but when you put it on the... So that's... Okay, so when you do that, a lot of people don't use uh, steel rod. Yeah. 
So, yeah. so it, it all know, depends on what tools you have in your toolbox that you're yeah. able to, to use. But um, I think, yeah, lifting, setting the angle a little bit higher when it's on the going away side. That's totally fine. Um, you could do that. Um, or, you know, just focusing on getting it down to a thin point where you can use the steel rod to sort of uh, refine that burr. Either one is, a, you know, possible strategy you could take. I'm assuming they will come nice and sharp. Absolutely. Every <laughs> single knife we sell has been hand sharpened, particularly by Shouty. You don't want to be hand sharpened by me. Trust me. Um, <laughs> You're getting better. But every knife that we sell comes hand sharpened. Uh, even if you buy it through one of our distributors, um, there's a full list of our distributors on our website. Um, but every knife that leaves our possession, we have done this process on. And that also gives us the chance to do our quality control and make sure that there are no hairline fractures or, you know, any weird spots in the metal, you know, stuff like that, that you would want to look out for. So nothing with defects goes out the door. Yeah. Um, can you tell us which one of the F Dick steel rods you use? There are many. We use the Dickeron Micro Super Fine Grit. Yeah. Are they called Super Fine or? Um, I think it's called the Super Fine Super Grit. Fine not extra fine like either yeah. so the color so they use the different color for the handle this is i would say like a, a, a grainish gray is uh yeah yeah so that's the color yeah i think you definitely want to make sure it's the super fine grit um you know the thing i see all the time that like just really upsets me is you know like in those sets of cooking knives that you buy at like Williams Sonoma or Target or wherever, oh, yeah. they include this sharpening steel in there. Ooh, don't use that. <laughs> it's I don't even know what somebody's supposed to do with that. It's like yeah. so rough. And if you use one of those things uh, on your knife, yeah, no, you're not gonna have much of a knife. It would be like putting it through a lawnmower, you know. So um, definitely invest in the super fine grit if you're getting a sharpening steel. Yeah. Because really most of the work will have happened on the stone, you know, the, the steel, the function of it is just sort of to, you know, smooth and to it's just bend super, that yeah, bird just to, very subtly. Yeah, yeah, you want to check the bumpiness. You don't want to make it bumpy. Uh, Ellen Sherman, last question. Do you ever sharpen the double hollow ground flat, either or both sides to regrind? Uh, mm, no. No, okay. No, because I mean, I, I can't speak to, I don't have any picture of any other knives right now, but for art knife, uh, the spine is actually, I mean, uh, you could, you could do that, but you have to, it's going to take you a long time. Yeah, so it, you can put it on the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely want it to be like a little bit of a higher angle yeah. than like. Flat. I would say minimum five degree angle just to, yes. to get some kind of benefit. Okay, so um, so if you can, I can put it on it flat on a stone. That's fine. But I'm at at the same time of uh, regretting the edge of the knife. I'm also taking away a lot from the back, and is I don't think. I don't think it's necessary, but but that's also okay if you want to do that. And also, so our knife has a round, um, what is it called the, the 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 rounded spine. The rounded spine. So it, it it might. I would say no. You don't have to, but you could with other, you know, double double hollow bar knife. Yes. Yeah, LeBaron Wallace. Thank you for your order. Much appreciated. Um, okay, so we did have a couple of pre-submitted questions. Um, if you guys watching have any other questions, you know, feel free to drop them in the, the chat at any time. Uh, but we had a couple of uh, pre-submitted questions. I do want to address those um, just for the people who took the time to write to us beforehand. Um, so, uh, let me, I have them all written down on my phone here. How do you manage the mess? Like when you're doing something with a Japanese water stone, how do you deal with all that mess? 
Because there's like dirty water everywhere. <laughs> Clean I, it. I don't want. <laughs> I don't want that dirty water all over my read desk, right? So like. Yeah, just you know, get get the 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 little uh, tray here. Right. It's so we have this is a little rubber tray. Um, I can't remember who makes it, but if you just go on Google and you type in, you know, tr rubber tray for Let's Japanese see. water stone. Um, any information? No, it doesn't say. Then anything. you can you can find information on that. The other thing um, that knife they, center. Knife center. Yeah, maybe. Okay, knife maybe knife. that's the company. Um, so we use that a lot. The other thing, depending on what kind of space you're in, you know, if you have a big kitchen and stuff like that, there's a thing you can invest in called a sink bridge. Um, now, Shadi had never heard of a sink bridge before, so I actually pulled up a picture here. I'm gonna pop it up on the screen. Oh. Uh, that's not a picture of us. Uh, that based on his knife, that looks to be some um, some okay. chef, but he doesn't yeah. have enough arm tattoos to be a to be okay. a really good you, chef, I guess. Well, but, if if you decided to go to a sink, just put it on the counter. Right, you could just put it on the counter. But, <laughs> yeah. but what I'm saying is, this is a viable option, and there, yeah. if you go online, there are a lot of things like this that kind of clamp the stone to it, so it's nice and secure. Uh, but this is called a sink bridge. Um, and you can do that over your sink if if you want to like really dump a bunch of water on it and get real messy. Yeah. Um, so I'll that's just that. Just put it on the sink. Or you could just put it on the side of the sink and like right. brush it off into the sink. That's what we usually do when we're doing a bunch. Okay, so that's that. Um, the next one was, uh, do your knives work with the Wicked Edge system? And this is a question that we've been asked quite a bit. Yeah. In, in the couple of years we've been in business. Um, the short answer is no. The short answer is that our knives were not designed to work with the Wicked Edge system. Our beveled knife will work with the Wicked Edge system, right? It will clamp on, should. It should, yeah. I, I've I never used think, it. I, I mean, we, we don't use it, but I've, I've heard from our customers that the beveled knife works. Uh, um, the double hollow ground knife, and um, if, if Melissa Hooper is, happens to be watching right now, she would be the person to ask, right? Because she managed to make it work. Was it Melissa? Uh, Sam Namek. Maybe Sam? <laughs> Sam okay. So, somebody out there that we're friends with was able to make the double hollow ground knife work with the Wicked Edge system. So the main reason why it doesn't, and it's not made to, made to uh, just in the design and geometry of the knife, um, our double hollow ground knife has a rounded spine, yeah. and you need a flat surface to clamp onto for the, for the little jig the wicked edge system um if i remember correctly what what this person did i think it was melissa I, anyway okay i don't uh, know she didn't tell me that uh so what this person did was that they were able to grind like actually on a stone they were able to grind the spine down to be flat oh yeah well use a wheel like or they use like a grinding wheel to wheel. make it flat yeah. and then it worked okay. with the wicked edge system so yeah. the short answer to that question is no um, the long answer is yes, it could with some basic modifications if you have the equipment to do that. But the way we get from us, it's not uh, compatible right out of the box. Yeah. Um, any tips on maintaining your knife? Um, don't drop it. Don't first. drop it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I dropped a cup of knives and, you know, in my life. Just don't drop it. And then always use the sheet. Um, and... Uh, so when you get done with your knife, make sure you put it in the sheath. Make sure you set it somewhere out of the way. You know, don't set it on the edge of your table, like where you're going to accidentally bump it and have it knock over and fall onto the floor. Yeah. And I'm, if you're doing something where there's a lot of moisture on the knife, one yeah. thing you notice, uh, Shouty's always taking the paper towel and just wiping down the knife. And yeah. I think that's, you don't even think about it anymore. It's now just like a habit that yeah. you develop. But um, the main reason is these aren't stainless steel. Um, generally speaking, good knives aren't made of stainless steel uh, just because it's hard to get a good edge with it and stuff. Um, but as a result, you want to try your best to remove moisture that's on the blade. Yeah, I tried to do that. Um, and also trying to just uh, um, regrand a little bit on the stone more often than what you think you need to. Yeah. Because if you're trying to reset the burr so many times, and that will be some little um, 
little bumpiness. And it's like when there's a pothole on the road, you keep driving into the pothole, like car after car, the pothole is going to get bigger. Yeah. And Instead, it's also going to damage your car. Yeah. It's going to. So um, I would just, you know, I have a bad habit and before just, you know, like raising the angle on the steel rod and it go like so heavy, so hard on it until like okay there's no result and i have to put it on a stone anyway so i think that's uh, something i learned over the years that i could do better yeah um the other thing is if you're putting your knife in storage for a long time and this especially applies to if you live in a humid climate so if you live somewhere like florida like mm -hmm. we do mm -hmm. um or if you live in texas or louisiana or somewhere like in the south where it's really humid all the time and say you're traveling and you're not going to be handling your knife for a while, um, I highly recommend just putting a thin coat of some kind of oil on the surface of the knife. What that's going to do is it's going to protect the blade from any moisture that's in the air. Because when your knife's in the sheath and it's summertime and it's, yeah. you know, 300% humidity, yeah. um, that, that, condensates on the blade yeah. and eventually you're going to get rust spots or something and we don't like that so if you're leaving your knife for a while uh, make sure you do just put some kind of light coating of oil and that applies to any knife that's just that's not our knife that's just mm -hmm. uh, general good practice with any knife that you have mm -hmm. um, okay anything else in yeah the remove the oil before you put it on stone because right yeah um, another question that came to us was, okay, what type of stones work best? We talked about that. What angles do you find work well for most people with our knives? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something we, 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 we touched on for a bit, yeah. uh, but you know, just making sure yeah, 15 to 20 degrees. Yeah. The um, angle is not the first thing comes with a sharp, sharp, very sharp and very good knife like you know good scraping knife it's the thinness you want to create first mm -hmm. and then make sure the edge is very smooth and do this test do this yeah. test i know it's scary but you're not gonna hurt yourself yeah um and then that's and and then the angle so yeah. um so i got a question on um the steel rod technique so the actual technique of using the steel rod um, how fast do you go, what angle, and how much pressure? So let's talk about each one of those. So when you're moving your knife on the steel rod, how fast do you go, and does it matter how fast you go? You go, I, I wouldn't go too slow. Again, if I go really slowly, I might change my angle on the way. Yeah, and you're being really it. cautious to hold the angle steady. Just yeah. like on the stone, holding the angle steady and letting your larger muscle groups like your arms yeah. and, and your back actually do the work. That's the that. speed I would do. I don't know what is that. Four miles per hour. I have no idea. Um, so like 40, 50 yeah. per quarter notes? Yeah. I don't know. Um, um, I would I say go it's, a it's like a, a medium speed. You're not like whipping it across there super fast, yeah. but you're not, you know, intentionally going slow. It's just yeah. like whatever comfortable speed. Mm -hmm. um, so the other one was angle on the, on the burnishing rod. So we talked about that a little bit. Um, again, the main thing there is just kind of setting the angle for your burr. Yeah. So I would say, you know, about five degrees higher ish than what you were using on the stone yeah um and then that depends on personal preference if you want something that catches more aggressively on the cane as you're scraping you can add you pressure can, you can add pressure a little bit or you can raise the angle a mm -hmm. little bit yeah um and try it after if it does nothing that means you didn't do too much right if it's like getting like and smooth again and that means you are being too rough on it. Yeah. So you have to practice a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so the last question was the amount of pressure that you use on the steel. Mm. Just try it light. And it, if it doesn't work, 
increase a little bit of pressure. Yeah, if you're having to press really hard on the steel to get the result that you want, chances are you didn't do enough work on the stone prior to going to the steel. Correct. It, it shouldn't take a lot of pressure yeah. on the sharpening steel. Yeah. Unless you're in the middle of making reeds and you can't leave the chair to do it and you can still use the uh, steel rod. Right. But if it doesn't work, increase. Um, I wouldn't increase the angle and increase your pressure at the same time. Yeah. Just try either way. Try increase the angle or increase the, uh, the pressure. And if it doesn't work, and then maybe try a little more combined so you know you, where you are mm -hmm. instead of you just go so heavy on it and then it ruin the edge. Yeah. So, so experimenting with it. Yeah, experiment with it. So I guess, you know, the main thing here is, you know, knife sharpening can seem like a really daunting task, you know, especially for somebody who's never done it before. And that's one of the questions we talked about. Um, but you just got to get in and do it. It's nothing really to be afraid of. Um, it's in a sense, it's basic sort of physics. You know, you, you rub this thing at a certain angle and it takes off some of the material and makes it thinner and that makes it, that's what sharp is, right? So, um, there's nothing to be afraid of. Chances are you're probably not going to sharpen it enough the first few times, but you have to be willing to fail in a sense. Yeah. Um, I thought I saw another comment come in, but I guess I didn't. Um, anyway, so... Do you want to check all the comments and just see if we miss anything? Yeah. Yeah, we're still getting used to reading the comments and, and responding. So we're just kind of scanning and making sure we didn't miss anybody. I think we got them all. Okay. Um, but, you know, for anybody who's new to knife sharpening... Um, and let's say you're a student and you're watching the stream right now or you're watching after the fact on YouTube um, and you want to put together your first knife sharpening setup um, would it be a wise idea to go to the hardware store and get like the eight dollar eight ninety nine sharpening knife sharpening knife or sharpening uh, stone Stone. Um, there's some cheaper Indian stone, but the problem is it's too narrow. Yeah, so you want to make sure you get you can get full coverage. Wide of the enough. Yeah, even this one is not wide enough, so I have to angle it. So yeah, so you have more coverage. So in that light, right? Um, you're a student. You're kind of sharpening. You're you're shopping around <laughs> for your first set of sharpening equipment. Um, what things? What things should they get? I think just save enough money. Just have a hundred dollar, you know. Yeah, you have a hundred dollar uh, budget, budget or so. And get a get, uh, get a nice you know. Shepton, yeah, get Shepton stone and then get the um, steel rod from Midwest. I think they cost forty something dollars. Yeah, I mean you can eventually get you know the this the is a Dicron pretty good. micro yeah um, but that's something that you work up to that's a, that's like a pro grade thing um, but the good thing is I mean with double reed tools in general uh, and knife sharpening included in that is you know the the price gap from a beginner grade item to a professional grade item is like nothing compared to other industries cars uh, so yeah when well, you look at cars or you look at you know um, I mean I see the camera over my shoulder so uh, you look at cameras I mean you can the the price gap between a professional model camera versus a consumer model camera is insane but for something like knife sharpening or something like reed tools it's really not that big of a difference price wise so generally speaking uh, in most cases, you'd be better off to just, you know, save money a little bit and get the good version. That yeah. way you don't have to go back and spend more money by upgrading in the future. Yeah. Uh, gotta, uh, do I look to reverse the burr on the first pass? This is from Ellen. Um, do you look to reverse the burr on the first passes? Yeah, yeah. You need to test and see if it's smooth. You need to know um, if that's you reverse, 
but you don't reverse too much. You only feel and see if there's a bumpiness. Right. So you're, you're not actually pressing it to make the burr go the other way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you're just kind of like feeling it. Yeah, feeling it. And then you actually more pressure pushing it away from you. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. on the final pass, when you're like finishing the burr, you would press a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. But in terms of reversing the burr, you know, we're not doing this kind of thing. You're just sort of feeling it against the steel. Yeah. Um, not dissimilar to the the thumbnail test that you yeah do. yeah but you know i still trust the steel rod it's so smooth yeah and um you know more test is more secure um yeah yeah i'm trying to think if there were any other questions that that were submitted before well um people can email us yeah so can... i think that that's all the questions that were submitted um I hope you guys enjoyed this live stream. We're about out of time anyway There's for what we can one. do. Uh, wait, even in the stone, even in the stone, do you think about reversing the burr? Uh, I don't usually. Okay, so after, if you're watching Ellen, um, after the first pass, right? I do 40, 50, 60 times as much as you need. And then I'm. Uh, Flipping it to the other side. I don't usually go back again. I right. don't. So once you establish where the burr is going to be, you usually don't flip it back. I don't flip it back, but you could because it depends. If you are lifting it up so much, you actually creating a huge burr. If you don't reverse that again, you might damage the edge on the steel rod. Do you understand what I'm saying? So because I'm lifting it up just tiny little bit, so I have a, a, a really good confidence that I won't. Yeah. When you're doing the thumbnail test, and this, this is sort of a follow-up question, uh, when you're doing the thumbnail test, do you want it to stick or do you want it to scrape? And can you just kind of talk to us about what the nail oh, test is? Oh, the thumbnail is? test it is definitely going to be more uh, less smooth because you want... You want it to catch. Right. The reason is I want I don't want to be catchy, but like, um, is is thin and smooth. Right. It's, it's like if you put in a razor blade on it. Yeah. There's no burr. There's no. It's, it's not actually that smooth, but like you feel the difference. Uh, yeah. It's I would say it's yeah. it's pretty smooth. But you want Instead it to of, um, you want it to catch. Um, I mean, at least in terms of if you're moving laterally. Uh, because really that's going to be the big test on your reeds on if this knife is sharp enough to scrape with um, yeah, you, if don't, it just, you don't do that. You don't yeah. do this on the reed ever like, Right, you don't slice it just testing right, but if the reed just slides not the reed if the knife just sort of slides when you do that and scrapes Chances are you're not going to be removing the amounts of cane that you need to without compressing the cane fibers right yeah. so you, you actually essentially need it to catch a little bit mm -hmm. um, and then the you know kind of the aggressiveness of that that's a personal preference thing mm -hmm. um, but yeah I think yeah you want to catch that way you make sure that you know as you're scraping you're actually removing stuff and not having to press the knife so sort of the key component of making sure you have a sharp knife is making sure that you don't have to press when you're making reads because you don't want to compress those cane fibers yeah three things again make the edge thing yep make the edge smooth and then play with the burr yep thin smooth burr yeah and experiment with it until you find what works for you yeah but all of this like initial setup stuff um you don't have to do that with our knives because we've already done that work for you uh but you know say if your knife is getting a little dull you've used it for a while or you want to bring it back or say if you got a brand new knife from somewhere else and you mm -hmm. don't really know how to start with it um you know, because a lot of knives, you take them out of the box and it's like, oh, it's dull, you know, but yeah, because it, it needs to be you, set up. Yeah, but, it um, set up. but yeah, you can kind of go through these steps and that, yeah. that should get you where you need to be. Yeah. If you're having a hard time with it, um, you can always message us and we'll be happy to guide you along. Uh, but, you know, if you're working it on the stone, it's not getting where it needs to be. Chances are it's that first step. It's not thin enough, which means that you've got to move it to a slightly coarser stone, do a little work on it 
and then move back to a uh, finer grit mm -hmm. stone. All right. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for tuning in. This was a ton of fun for us. Um, let you guys see Shouty. Thank um, you. Thanks for watching. Where'd Toby go? He was here a second ago. I meant to show you guys uh, Toby. Cause Our I, doc. Because I know Toby's sort of like the most famous person here. <laughs> um, but thank you guys for tuning in. This was a ton of fun. Um, in case you didn't know, like I said, we're putting out weekly videos uh, just covering different topics like this one um, on our YouTube channel. So be sure, be sure to search that up and subscribe. Um, also, we are doing occasional live streams like this one so we actually get a chance to interact with you guys a little bit. So um, thank you guys so much. You guys rock. And uh, yeah, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Oh, well, thanks, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Kevin. Bye, Kevin. <laughs> Bye.